Today I decided to freeze Han Solo in Carbonite using nodes. Specifically today we're going to be using the Raycast node and in developing this node group I actually came across some other very interesting ways to apply it. Even if you haven't seen Star Wars you're probably familiar with this prop. It's one of the most iconic props from one of the most iconic movies of all time. So I decided to recreate it in Blender using geometry nodes. By the way, you can actually buy a life-sized version of this. Uh, it's only 12,599 euros and 50 cents. By the way, if you're interested in trying out these systems for yourself, you can download the project file, which includes Han Solo, Frozen and Carbonite, along with these two other examples. You can input your own object and change the node group however you like. The link is in the description. First, of course, we need the man himself. So I started looking for Han Solo on Sketchfab. And as you can see, even when I look for Han Solo alone, it's almost easier to find him already frozen in Carbonite. Uh, well, for this one, I can't really download it. We also get Han's pistol, but eventually I found this model, uh, which is just a 3D scan of a Han Solo action figure. Now, as you can see, he looks a little blurry. His pistol has seen better days, but for the purposes of this video, it's good enough. In order for this to work, we first need Han the man himself, and then we need some carbonite. And then we'll make a system that basically takes Han and puts him in kryptonite and leaves an imprint just like that. This way we have our basic effect very easily, as you can see, uh, and we can make adjustments on the mesh if needed later. And with the same node group, you can also get effects like this, where it kind of looks like the matrix effect when Neo falls down onto uh, the pavement. And we can also change things here like the smoothness or even make it fit more uh, basically like this, like inflating the mesh like that. So you can get different kinds of effects, which all look very cool. I'll summarize how the system works before we really get into it. Basically, we're going to have a plane. Then with geometry nodes, we're going to move it down and then we're going to shoot rays up at Han. Uh, and then we're going to just move it back up to the positions that those rays hit. So this vertex here will go to his chin, this vertex here will go to his chest, etc. And after that we'll move the rest of the mesh back up to its original position so we get this effect. And then finally we'll add some smoothing to really finalize our shape. Like I mentioned, we will create this effect using the Raycast node. Now the Raycast node, similar to the Geometry Proximity node, can take a target object and get information from that target object. Now the best way to understand the Raycast node is that you give every vertex of your input mesh a little laser pointer. As you can see, in this case, the rays are traveling in the Y direction. And I've made this a little visualizer so you can actually see what the rays are doing. I can change the ray direction here uh, and it will also give us some outputs uh, on the raycast node and I will explain them. The is hit output will simply tell you if a ray hit the object or not. So if I shrink the target you can see that some rays don't actually hit the object. Next we have the hit position uh, and it will write the position where the ray hits the target onto the original geometry. And that basically holds true for all of these outputs. So the hit normal will give you this normal and write it over here. Similarly, we have the length of the actual ray. And then we also have this attribute output for which you also have an input. This basically means that you can have an attribute on your target object uh, and then write it all the way over here. By the way, if you want to recreate this visualizer, I've put all the nodes on screen. It's a very simple node group, so you can pause the video and make it for yourself. So I've placed Han Solo down so that he's basically clipping the floor. Uh, the middle of his body is here at the origin. First I'll add any object, it can be a plane, uh, and I'll open my Geometry Nodes editor and just disconnect the geometry, because we're gonna start with a grid. And I'll just connect the size and resolution to a group input so we can easily control it. Uh, we can do that by just pulling out another window, uh, going to Properties, and then going down to the Modifier menu. And like I mentioned, we're first gonna move the shape down. So let's use a Set Position node and just move it down 10 meters. Next, let's get our target object with the object info node and we can just pick Han here. Now that we moved our plane down, we want to shoot some rays up at Han. And we're going to use the raycast node for that. So let's get it over here. Uh, and we're going to set the ray direction to 1. So it's going up. You also want to make sure that the ray length is longer than how far you will push your plane down. Because if the ray length was, for instance, 5, then it would only reach about halfway here and then it won't hit anything. 
So let's keep it at 100 and connect the hand solo geometry to the target geometry. Now this target geometry is not the geometry that we're actually shooting the rays from. Remember, we're shooting it from the plane towards Han. And that's what the node is asking for. It's asking for the object that you want to point your laser pointer to. Whoops, I see that this reverted back. Let's set it back to one. What we want to do next is use this hip position information to move the plane back up towards Han Solo. But we also want to make sure that only the rays that hit Han actually get moved up. And for that we can use the is hit output. So it will eventually look like this. We'll get a set position node and plug it up here. Then we'll move the geometry to the hit position and use the is hit as a selection. And if we look at our object, we'll see that something has gone wrong. That's because Han seems to be standing here. Uh, remember, we rotated him down. So we actually want to set this from original to relative. That way it will take into account the rotation and scale of the object as well. So now we can see that part of the mesh has gone upwards towards Han and it's kind of sticking to the surface here. And we can even go down and look here. <laughs> Here's his imprint. And now to move it back, it's very simple. We just get another set position node, put it after the second one. And we're going to take the same is hit output uh, and we're going to use some Boolean math to take the inverse of that. So not the hit output. Uh, we're going to use that as our selection and just move it up 10 meters. But you can see that we do run into some issues. I found that the is hit output is not always very accurate. So it results in these artifacts right here where it thinks that it hasn't been moved, but it actually has and has been moved back to its foot and then another 10 meters up. So it's not going to work. We're going to not use this and instead we're going to just base it off the position. It's very easy. Let's get the position, separate the X, Y, Z. So we'll take the Z from it and then we'll just compare that with 10 and we'll use that instead. Or actually, was it minus 10? Yeah, it's minus 10. There we go. So yeah, this value is the same as this value, uh, which is the same as this, but a positive. That's one problem solved. If we now go to our plane and we'll hide Han for a little bit, we can see his imprint here, but we also see these vertices going up. Now we only get this when we partially submerge Han here. Uh, so if you push him down more, then we won't get him. Because it makes sense, right? Because it's shooting rays from up here and it's hitting here. So it's going to move the mesh towards this position. And we're going to fix it by clamping this hit position vector. Uh, so let's pull it out a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to get a separate XYZ node. Because sadly, there's not a clamp node for an actual vector. So we have to separate it. Uh, and then let's get a combine as well. And we're just going to pass along the X and the Y. Uh, and then the Z we're just going to clamp. So let's clamp it from a minimum of minus 10 again. And then the max is going to be zero. This means that our plane can basically move only in this area. So it's that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, this area. So if it tries to travel further up, it will just get stopped here. So let's select Han and if we move him back up, you'll see that it's fixed. If we move him down, we'll get the imprint that we want. And we can hide him to see how that looks. Now the final step will be smoothing this edge of the mesh so it looks a little more natural. Smoothing in geometry nodes is not that hard. You just get a set position node, uh, take the position and then use a blur attribute node to blur that field basically. So as you can see, if I plug it in right here into the position input, you will see that it already gets blurred a little bit. Now I actually only want to smooth in the Z direction. So instead of just plugging it right here, let's just separate this vector here take the Z output and put it through the blur attribute node. Uh, we'll have to reconnect that when we set it to float. Uh, and then we'll just combine everything together at the end, just like so. Connect it. And then only the Z position gets smoothed out. So we don't lose any detail in the X and Y direction. Secondly, we'll create a mask. So we only really smooth this part and maybe this part. Uh, we can do that by taking the Z value and we're going to run it through an absolute math node, which turns negative values into positive ones. If we just view the geometry real quick with this value, uh, then you'll see what that does. It gets bigger the more the geometry is pushed down. And we can control the fall off using a map range node uh, so we can make it more bright uh, and then we basically want the inverse of this. So let's get a subtract node. Uh, instead of plugging it on the top, we'll plug it on the bottle and then we'll set this to one. So we're subtracting this value from one. Let's view that. And now you can see we can create a mask. So only this part is selected. We control it here. So maybe we wanna 
have this as our selection. Let's plug that into the weight input of the blur attribute node and see what happens. Let's turn off the viewer node. And now we can see that we retain some detail on the actual model here, uh, but we can smooth this out. Maybe let's go a little more. We have, of course, pushed Han pretty far down into the kryptonite. Uh, so let's select him and bring him back up. Uh, but this also reveals another problem. We can see Han through the mesh. Now, if you're just showing the carbonite, this is not really a problem. You can just hide him and then set the range that you want, basically like this. You can even uh, change the resolution here in the properties. Maybe something like that, some more smoothing. And you can get these kind of effects already, but maybe the surface needs to be translucent. So it's more like a surface tension effect. And if our object clips through, well, that's not really what we want. So we can fix that by actually going all the way to the beginning to our target object right here. Uh, and we're just gonna do a small little operation, set position, and then take the normal. And then we're just gonna scale the normal down a bit. Let's connect it. And you'll see what it does. I can scale it down uh, and it will basically inflate uh, this mesh a little bit so that Han is visible through it. We can uh, use this mode. You can go into uh, X-ray mode and see how that looks. And if you want even more control instead of a scale node, you can also use a multiply node and kind of pull on them one at a time. Maybe this can go here and then these ones a little further. Maybe like that, maybe a, bit, a little bit more. Now for some finishing touches, I of course wanna shade this smooth. So let's do that using this node. Uh, and then also let's set the material that you want. You can pick any material that you want. I've got this one, uh, but in order for it to work, you actually need UVs as well. So let's go all the way back to the beginning to our grid right here. Uh, and here we have our UV map. We're gonna just take that and drag it all the way to the end all the way to the group output. It has to be this group output. You cannot create a new group output node and then plug it in there. It's kind of stupid. Then you want to go to your modifier menu where you will have an output attribute called UV map. And then we're going to have to give it a name right here. I'm just going to call it UV map. Uh, and then let's go to our shader editor. Um, I've actually already selected the stone ground that I've downloaded. It will be empty and you can just select it. Uh, but as you can see, nothing really works yet, even though we're using this UV output. So why is that? Well, actually we need to use the attribute node instead. Uh, let's just type in UV map, which is the name that we gave earlier, and then connect this vector to our mapping node instead. Uh, and we'll see that the texture works now. So yeah, that's basically how you achieve the effect. We can move him however we like. Uh, so we can, for instance, rotate him maybe 19 degrees. Uh, and then if you want to work on the actual mesh, uh, we can just take the mesh, uh, click convert to mesh, and that will basically apply the geometry nodes modifier. We can now make changes if we want to. For instance, we can remove the size here. So it's actually looking more like the block from the movie maybe like extrude it like that and fill it up. Uh, and now it's basically a block of carbonite. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you're a long time viewer of this channel, uh, you may have noticed that I've been gone for a while. Yeah, my last upload was about three months ago and a lot has happened in the meantime. I've actually started working at another YouTube channel called Fern. You may have seen them in your recommended. Uh, we make these 3D animated documentaries and it's been really cool to work there. And if you haven't heard of it, check it out right now. You can uh, click the link up here. Or is it up here? I always forget. Um, anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you like this new style of editing. Let me know in the comments below uh, what I could improve or what you want to see next. And if you enjoyed or this was useful to you, uh, be sure to like the video. It really helps out the channel in the algorithm and recommends it to more people. And for me, that's great because I really believe in geometry notes and I want to teach it to all the people who don't really know yet. I think it's the most powerful tool in Blender, especially with the new simulation notes. Stay tuned for that because I've got some really cool systems coming up. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. And uh, I'm going to let in my cat because he wants to go inside. <sighs> Yeah. Oh, and check out my Instagram. I have more personal content there and you can also see behind the scenes. Bye-bye.